I am excited to bring to you the announcement of our 12.1 release. I'd like to take a few moments to walk through some of those features and demonstrate for those for you in the software itself. We'll be talking about the extension of the 12.0 platform of Thin Manager today, including uh, containerization of display clients that can now be run right on Thin clients, utilizing the local resources of those Thin clients and really extending our compute out to the edge devices that we've already got in our facilities. We'll be talking about the additional containers that are supported, which include support for Citrix storefront. We'll talk about the ability to change our database password increased logging capabilities, amongst some other changes to the behavior in our subscription-based software. Before we explore that extended containerized concept, let's first take a look back at really how we've traditionally delivered those web-based applications. If we think to how we've always delivered web-based applications with Thin Manager, this was accomplished by deploying remote desktop services, deploying a web browser application of our choice, publishing that application, and utilizing Windows uh, user accounts and profiles to deliver those applications down to our Thin clients. We really extended that technology with the 12.0 platform by introducing the concept of containers using Docker. We deployed Docker onto a Windows server, and this allowed us to remove some of the complexities of managing those Windows profiles and was able to deploy containers out to thin clients hosted on either Windows or Linux servers. In the 12.1 release, we really extend that technology to remove the total need for that server-based infrastructure completely for hosting web-based application sessions. We're now able to deliver that right down to the thin client itself, utilizing the local resources of the thin clients that we likely already have in our facilities. This can really take uh, and push some of that compute out to those edge devices and really provides a more manageable and more scalable architecture. When we think about the applications that we have in the portfolio today, this is really gonna open a lot of doors to be able to scale those uh, additional capabilities that we wanna bring into our facilities. If I think about where content can live in a, in, a, in a thin manager environment as we look forward, we can have content coming from various different locations, different thin clients. We can even use thin clients to host containerized applications to be visualized on other thin clients. So what's, instead of looking at PowerPoint, really take a few moments and dive into the product itself. Let's first look at some of that expanded container concept. When we launched the 12.0 platform, we introduced the concept of container hosts, meaning we would specify a particular host a Windows host, for example, where we had the capability to run those container images. With the 12.1 release, we're no longer required to specify container hosts. We can actually come in and create a containerized application that can be run right on the thin client. If I give this a name of, uh, of for a demonstration, for example, I'll notice that additional container images are now available to me. I can run content in Chrome, Firefox, or I can say that I'm going to pull content from a particular Citrix application, meaning I have Chrome and Firefox with the ICA client installed. This means no additional maintenance for ourselves and full support for Citrix storefront with Thin Manager. Once I've selected the container application of choice, in this case, I'll use a, a Google Chrome as our example. I'll continue to walk through my wizard as I would have uh, you know, historically, and I'll come to a location where I now get to decide where is that container going to run? Do I want that coming from one of those container hosts that we've seen before? Or do I actually want to run that on a thin client? Again, utilizing the local resources that that thin client has. If I don't want to explicitly call out which thin client will host this container, rather, I'd rather just say this particular display client should be used across multiple different thin clients. I would say, hey, I'm going to run the container on whichever thin client I apply the display client to. So I'll go ahead and set this up and say, hey, I want to create a, a session of Google Chrome that's going to run on whatever thin client, whatever terminal profile I apply this particular display client to. If you're familiar with our workstation display client, this will function very similarly. At the next location, I need to specify what resources I'm going to use for that container itself. How many, what's the maximum resource consumption on the thin client that this container can consume? Depending on the resources of my thin client, I may be able to host multiple container images on a single thin client. 
in this case, maybe I would say, yeah, I'm, I would like to reserve two gigabyte of the, the available RAM for my thin, uh, container image to run. Optionally, I could specify a starting path or an application link, as we call that, which the URL that will be uh, that will automatically start up. We do also support all the typical command line parameters, such as kiosk mode that Chrome or Firefox would support to obfuscate the um, the URL bar from the end user. I could give this um, a, a particular location, specify my viewpoint server, and deliver a factory talk viewpoint application running on the thin client, utilizing no server side resources for hosting that web browser application. I would now be ready to take that particular display client and apply that to one of my terminals. I've pre-configured a few different terminals to already be running some of those containerized applications. If I look at the 6200 TKB thin client, that's our dual 4K uh, thin client that I've got running. If I looked at that particular client, I would see that I've got an IP camera, I've got a shadow of a panel view, and now I have this container image. It's actually running right there on the thin client itself. And if I come to shadow, I've now delivered a really unique experience. I've got three different types of information coming from different locations, none of which require me to connect to a server, none of which require the installation of remote desktop services. I now am able to visualize my, uh, my HMI application, shadow of a particular panel view, and maybe a camera to see what's actually happening on these particular devices all while just utilizing the local resources of that thin client. Now, historically, if I would have delivered all of my applications from remote desktop services, the resources that were, would have been used on that thin client would have been very, very minimal, right? Because we were using centralized resources for compute. In this case, you'll start to see that I am now utilizing some of the local resources of this particular thin client. Again, really starting to push some of our application uh, compute out to the edge while still maintaining that centralized uh, control and centralized management that Thin Manager has delivered for decades. Maybe one of the best ways to understand that we actually have application content running right on a Thin client would be for me to remove our network connection. In this case, I'm going to simply reach in and disconnect the network cable that's connected to that 6200 TKB Thin client that we're looking at. You'll see the shadow instance itself will freeze briefly. I'll also see that the thin client itself remains on. I've only removed network, but what I will lose is I'm going to lose both my camera and my connection via VNC to a panel view. Both of those connectors are going to be network reliant. However, the connection that retains is going to be the connection to our container image. So while I see that I have no camera connection and I've lost my VNC session, I still have that local instance. Now, data itself may not be updating, but depending on where the network broke, I may still have connection to be able to pull data from my, from my controller, data from my HMI server or my data servers. So being able to run content out at the edge or on the thin client themselves really starts to expand our possibilities. By reestablishing that network connection, I'll see that the other sessions will reconnect and the content itself that was running on the thin client retains and will able to reconnect back to its data sources. There have also been enhancements made to the management of Thin Manager itself. Let's take a look at the Thin Manager server configuration wizard, where we'll see that we now have some more industry standard logging mechanisms, such as syslog support. We can now configure the syslog server address that we wish to specify data be logged to, the port in which that should be connected on, and which data we're interested in. I can now look in, for example, the, uh, the event viewer and see that I had a thin server started event based on what I had prescribed to be seen through the thin manager server configuration wizard. Furthermore, we can look at the ability now to change the database password. Those users that have migrated to 11.2 or newer will have noticed that the database itself now has encryption. Uh, the key used to encrypt the database is generated off of a password and that password was specified at the initial creation of that database. Previously, the only way to change that database password would be to start a new database. We now provide you the capabilities to verify that database, as well as do a vacuum or collapse the size of the database itself. 
This vacuum process is done on startup and shutdown of the database, but for long running systems, this can help simplify and collapse the size of that database as we look to schedule routine backups. In closing, I'm really excited to bring some of the expanded content that we've brought into the 12.0 platform with the release of 12.1. Please take some time to go out, learn about the platform. If you'd like to learn more, I encourage you to check out our links on Seismic, as well as the Rockwell Automation Knowledge Base. Thank you very much for your time and enjoy the platform.